Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Kaler. Today I'd like to talk to you about implementing Dijkstra's algorithm using priority queues for efficiency. So Dijkstra's algorithm is great, it works well, but it does have one issue. And this is that you have to find that least cost path to pick next by going through the entire cost array, checking for each one whether you've already picked this path or not. Now, for the little graphs, like what we dealt with in our example in the last video, this is not a huge deal. So we have eight vertices, we have to go look through everything, no biggie. But it does become an efficiency issue for large graphs, because each time we have this extra run through the array to go try to find what is the path we should be picking this time. Let's compare that to our breadth first search. At each point when we want to say, okay, what's the next shortest path, we pull something off the front of the queue. So we're not looking through everything, we're just taking the one item from the front. Either it's already been found, which does happen to us sometimes, so we ignore it, or it hasn't been found and we're going to use it this time. In general, the number of items that we have to pull off the queue for each path we actually say, okay, here's this path, is far smaller than the number of vertices in the graph. So we're going to be much better off with that queue approach than we are with the approach of having to go through the entire array. We know that for Dijkstra's algorithm, the queues aren't gonna work for us they're looking at the wrong thing. This is just not going to be a match. We're not going to get the right results. But priority queues could actually work for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the basic breadth first search type algorithm. But instead of a first in first out queue, we're going to use a priority queue and we're going to pay attention to the costs of the edges. Our priority that we use will be the total path cost to this point. Then whatever is the first thing in the priority queue, the minimum value will be the smallest path cost among those things we've put into the priority queue and haven't yet removed. So let's see how this works. Initial state, we have an empty priority queue. We've set up our arrays. Now we're going to start working on the edges out of that source. And once again, we're gonna take A as our source. So we handle the edge from A to C. Unlike Dijkstra's working all in the arrays, we're gonna go ahead and put this in the priority queue, very similar to what we did with our breadth first search. But of course our cost here will be two, the cost of the edge from A to C, not one for one edge. We'll also put in A to G for seven and A to B for four. Now notice this isn't a first in first out queue. It is based on priority. So we did move that A to G over to accommodate A to B for four. Now, of course, we are likely implementing our priority queue if we care about efficiency in something like a heap as opposed to just a line, but I'm showing this as a list because that's a simpler way to represent it. So now that we've put the items from the edges out of A into our priority queue, we'll check our loop conditions, which of course will be not yet finished. We still have things in our priority queue. We certainly still have paths we haven't found. So now we're going to handle the minimum item from the priority queue which will be A to C for two. So we now have the path C coming from A for a total cost of two, and we mark that done. And we start working through the edges out of C. So this process is basically the same as it would be in either the breadth first or Dijkstra's. We're looking at each of these edges and seeing what is this gonna do for us. Of course, we already have A, so that one we ignore. C to F, we're gonna go ahead and put that in our priority queue, total cost of 10, coming to F from C. 
Same for G, we're going to put in a total cost of 5, 2 plus 3, coming from C. That was all of our edges out of C, so we check our loop conditions, we're still going. So we pick our next item off the priority queue, which in this case will be A to B for 4. So we update our table accordingly and start looking at the edges out of B. Of course, we do nothing about B to A, but we do add information for B to D. So we put D from B for 6 total into our priority queue. Now we're going to check our loop conditions. Still not done. So we take the next one, which will be G from C for five. So we add that information to our array now and start looking at the edges out of G. C we already have, A we already have, D we don't have yet. So we go ahead and add to our priority queue that we can get to D from G for 10. We don't actually check it against anything because it's not in our table yet in this case. So we're not doing a comparison, did this improve things? We're simply saying, if we already had it, we don't put it into the priority queue. If we don't have it yet, we do put it into the priority queue. And the priority queue is going to handle that question of which of these do we want, which of these is the smallest. Then we have G to J, and we put that in there for nine. That brings us to the end of our edges out of G. So now we check our loop conditions and keep going. Next thing we're gonna pull off is that we can get to D from B for six. We update our array with that information and start working through those edges. No action for D to B, no action for D to G. We also have that. D to H, we're going to update our priority queue, adding that we can get to H from D for 12. And that covered those edges, so we check our loop conditions. And of course, we're still going. Now we check A to G for seven. Remember we had put that in the very first round of things before we ever went into our loop, but we have found a shorter path to G, which we grabbed first because this is a priority queue. So we're simply going to ignore this. We already have that item. So we throw that away from our priority queue, go back to check our loop conditions and move on to the next item in the priority queue, which is that we can get to J from G for nine. That is new to us, so we do add it to our table and look at those edges out of J. So F, we don't have F in our table yet, so we're going to add J to F 12 total to our priority queue. G we do already have, so we skip that, and H we don't already have, so we put that in that we can get to H from J for 11. Then we move on to check our loop conditions and then get C to F for 10. We update our array there since we did not have F yet. Start working through its edges. So C to F gets us nothing. C to J gets us nothing. We move on, check our loop conditions. That'll bring us to getting to D from G for 10. We've already done D, so we just ignore that and move on to check our loop conditions and go on to the next one. This gives us H from J for 11. That actually gives us all of our paths. So we're going to go ahead and avoid looking at those edges. When we get back up to our loop, we're done because we've found everything, although our priority queue isn't quite empty yet. So I encourage you to look through this, compare it. We did the same example with the basic Dijkstra's algorithm. 
So see that they are accomplishing the same thing in slightly different ways. This approach in general will be a bit more efficient, particularly as our graphs get larger. Before we go, I do want to mention that Dijkstra's with a priority queue approach does have another name. It is often referred to as uniform cost search. And I also want to note that Dijkstra's in general, and certainly with this implementation, is an example of what we call best first search, where we're not going breadth across first, we're not going depth down first. Instead, we're looking for what is the best thing out of what we've seen so far to look at next. And so that's the fundamental approach behind Dijkstra's. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time when I'll be talking about Prim's algorithm, very, very similar algorithm to what we just did, except that we're not going to be interested in paths. We're going to just be looking at individual edges and whether they're what we need.